today on the Master Builders Podcast. I'm joined by Carl Braithwaite, owner of Catalyst Construction, along with one of his team members, Jason Helsby. Jason was the Auckland Regional winner of the Apprentice of the Year competition, moving on to the national finals where he was the runner-up. Jason gives us great insight into what's involved in applying and participating in the Apprentice of the Year competition, and also how he built lifelong friendships being involved with the other apprentices. We also get insight from Carl on why he chooses to invest in developing his apprentices, turning them into great tradespeople, and the benefit that is delivering to him at Catalyst Construction. All right, Carl and Jason, hey, welcome along to the Master Builders podcast. Great to have you on the show today. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for having us. Yeah, hey, look, looking forward to learning, Jason, about your journey on Apprentice of the Year last year. Uh, you had a, a good run in there and achieved some pretty epic results, so we're interested to learn about your journey there. And Carl, also your uh, insights as a construction company owner around what it's like to have apprentices, what the involvement in the Apprentice of the Year was like um, for you as the owner. Uh, but before we dive into those good details, how about I throw a few um, fast fact questions at you? Um, so are you breakfast or dinner guys? Jason, what's your, what's your go-to? Uh, I definitely enjoy a good hot breakfast. Nice. Yeah, set you up yep. for a, uh, a day of physical activity. Yeah, that's it. So, I like yeah, it. bacon and eggs always a good go-to. Oh, good man. And do you cook that yourself or have you got someone that uh, delivers that to you? Definitely on the weekdays I cook my own breakfast, but uh, sometimes I get a bit lucky on the weekends. Yeah, good man. Uh, no, he looks after me. Awesome. And Carl, how about you? Yeah, I guess um, yeah, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, isn't it? So, yeah, I enjoy so, a good breakfast. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. You never say no to a good uh, dinner with your friends and that as well. So it's always yeah. good to yeah. But the up. social social interaction goes uh, pretty good with food as well, doesn't it? Okay. And what about on holiday, guys? Are yeah. we likely to find you uh, hanging out on the uh, pool lounge or relaxing, or are you going to be bungee jumping? Jason, how about uh, you? Personally, I definitely uh, I definitely get out there, get active, and do as much as I can, make most of it. Yeah. Cool. Cal. Yeah, I'm definitely an active sort of guy. I like to be out there sort of doing the stuff, but um, lounging by the pool sounds pretty good, but those <laughs> young kids of mine don't allow that. <laughs> no, no, you're a, uh, a couple of decades away from being able to get back and relax at the pool lounger, mate. Sorry to tell you. Yeah, so <laughs> okay. one day. A- an important question for you guys, cats or dogs? What's your preference, Jason? Uh, dogs, 100%. Nice, Definitely good man. Person. Cal? Oh, look, I'd, I'd have to say both, mate. Our house is... Got two cats and a dog, so I love them all. So yeah, right, Doctor Doctor Doolittle, and uh, yeah. are any of them allowed on site? No, no, health and safety not allowed to anymore. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a bit of a bit of a shame, isn't it? It was always a, the the good old days when you used to head to site, and there was always uh, one of the tradies had a had a dog either roaming around or in the back of the back of the ute. But oh, um, yeah. I guess for all the right reasons now, uh, we don't see that too much. No, our, our Labrador would love to come on site each day, but yeah, he's got to stay home. So. Yeah. Bugger. Alrighty, and uh, early rises or night owls? And I'll, let me ask this question in, a, in the sense of what naturally comes to you, because I know uh, most of our construction teams are up early on site getting stuff done, but what comes naturally to you, early riser or, or night owl? Jason? Uh, personally, I'm definitely a night owl. I, I do struggle with my early mornings, but um, obviously with, uh, with our trade, it's required, so I do my best. <laughs> nice, but a, a couple of cheeky sleep-ins on the weekend. Yeah, definitely. Good one. How about you, Cal? Uh, yeah, definitely early riser. Yeah, sort of more a morning person than a night. So generally if it gets too late, uh, I'll be falling asleep on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we won't uh, we won't dive into what that means for your uh, relationship with your wife, mate, with your wife falling asleep at night. We'll, we'll leave that one alone. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's dive into uh, Catalyst Construction, the company that um, Carl, you own, and Jason, you're, you're working for. Um, can you give us a bit of insight, Carl? You know, what's your focus in the with Catalyst? Um, yeah, so we're sort of mainly <coughs> residential. We sort of do new homes and renovations. So... Um, we do a little bit of light commercial, but I would say most of our, 95% of our work is residential. I've got a team of nine guys, six builders, um, and three apprentices usually going. Usually two to three jobs happening at once. Yeah, depend. I guess depending on the size of the project is how many we'll try and do in a year. Sort of a couple of our larger projects, which have won awards in House of the Year, they've sort of taken sort of 12 to 18 months to do a pro- to do one project, whereas some of our smaller renovations you could do, you know, two or three of them within a year. So I think it's depending what's coming 
in the books and what's sort of in the pipeline and then we sort of just adjust and do the work as as it comes through. Mm. And Carl, do you still get your hands dirty or are you uh, made the transition from builder to business owner? Um, pretty much made the transition. You know, I still like to get on site and try and get the hands dirty, but every time you sort of try and put the tool belt on, you have to leave somewhere to go do something. So it sort of doesn't come out very often anymore. Um, I think uh, you know, important moving imp- forward, I may have to. Yeah, and I think an important important yeah. transition, right? You can't be uh, you can't be all things to all people. So uh, you know, running the running the business and making sure the jobs are coming in and then being coordinated, critical critical elements, so that then the um, the team that are still keen to get calluses on their hands can. Uh, uh, keep operating 100 percent yeah yeah that's right i'm pretty lucky i've got a good team of guys on the ground to sort of take care of the stuff day to day so mm. whereas i can sort of take care of the background and keep the workflow coming through take yeah. care of the business so perfect and cal what uh, attracted you to the building industry initially how long have you been involved uh sort of, i guess grew up with it my dad um was sort of block layer kind of by trade and he built a lot of our own homes when we were younger so it's sort of always been around it um, when i left school it was quite hard to get an apprenticeship so i sort of did a few other things i worked in the forestry and on boats sort of dive master mm-hmm. and dive instructing and chartering so right. um, and then yeah got into the building apprenticeship so i've always been in it but then did a lot of travel so once I was qualified, my wife and I did a lot of travel around the world, which the New Zealand qualification comes in really handy for. Yeah. And then um, come home, settled and worked for a few good companies in New Zealand and then eventually went out on my own and just a one man band and slowly built it up from there to mm. what we've got now. We've got a pretty good team going, so very happy yeah. with Nice one. But decided to uh, leave the block laying aside. It looks like too much like hard work, the old block laying, isn't it? Carrying those big concrete blocks <laughs> yeah, around site. Yeah. Saw what damage it was doing to the old man's back. So yeah. oh, I tell you, I um <laughs> come from a building family myself my dad was a was a builder for um uh, i guess uh, 35 years or so and uh, saw lots of block layers in my time around there and tell you what they had uh, they had big guns from all that lifting but it looked like pretty hard work to me oh yeah it is definitely yeah okay and jason tell us uh, you mate what uh, got you interested in the in the building game and how did you kind of first transition into it uh well it's actually a funny story i didn't Coming out of high school, I knew that university wasn't for me, but I never, you know, I, I wasn't sure about what I wanted to do. And I have to be honest, building like wasn't really on the cards for me. I, I never even considered it. But um, yeah, one day a mate just uh, called me up and he said, I know a guy who's looking for an apprentice, do you want to come give it a go? So I thought, you know, what's the harm? And I could enjoy it. And yeah, after that, I sort of never looked back. I just enjoyed it so much that, yeah, I just signed up and that was me. Awesome. And was that with Carl, that, that opportunity? Uh, no, so I actually started my apprenticeship in the Bay of Pliny in Whakatani with the, I was actually the first apprentice to, to the guy that I started working for. Right. And um, yeah, I did two years there and then my partner studying in Auckland and I decided to make the move while they were up here. Cool. All right. Yeah. And what was it that you uh, enjoyed initially? It obviously it kind of grabbed you when you first got involved in, in building. What was it that uh, you enjoyed so much? I'm very much a practical person, so I like hands-on approach to work and um, just the the problem solving and the people skills involved in in the trade I really enjoyed. And also just uh, being able to see your finished product once you're done, you know, it's it's so satisfying walking through a house that, you know, you've put so much work into and um, seeing the final product is just awesome, yeah. Oh, totally. Look, I can certainly appreciate that when you're getting to the end of the day and stand back and actually see what you've done with your uh, your day's work. I think for uh, some of us that maybe spend a bit more time doing, uh, what would we say, less hands-on work, uh, sometimes you get to the end of the day and you go, damn, what did I achieve today? But uh, the builder always knows, uh, can see what, the, what they've got achieved. So that's, that's very cool. And Cal, tell us um, your, your thoughts. You know, I guess there's uh, different approaches with different construction companies. Some go, hey, look, I'm not going to put the time and effort into training apprentices. I'll let someone else do that and I'll try and grab them a bit later. What was it about you and Catalyst where you decide that uh, the investment in apprentices is a, is a good option for you guys as a company? Yeah, I'm sort of obviously was trained myself once upon a time. So and if we don't have companies or builders in there training up the staff, we're not going to have you know the staff coming through. So you know, I'm a, quite a firm believer in giving back to the industry so guys once upon a time put the effort into me to teach me so I'm like I said I think it's 
a good idea to put the investment into other guys and sort of pass it on. So, you know, I guess um, taking on apprentices, you know, you can tailor their skill set to your company if you like. Um, you can train them, you know, how you like things done and they work in your company and then sort of as you come out the other end, you know, you get a, a good rail wound that sort of tradesman at the other end that you know, hopefully sticks around and puts a bit of time back into the company. So it was very hard to get tradesmen and it still is. So if you can train them through and keep them on, you know, you get the return on the investment eventually. Great. But uh, you look, I really appreciate that uh, value of giving back and realizing that someone invested time, money and effort into you at one stage. And now it's, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to, for you to do that for someone else, uh, which clearly you've done with, with Jason. Um, Cal, give us some insight. What are the things that you would most look for? And, you know, not just an apprentice, but people that are joining the Catalyst team. What are the things that uh, you think are important? Uh, I think guys who obviously presentable and sort of can communicate well, uh, they need to be trusted worthy because clients are inviting us into their homes so um, and they're trusting us with a lot so if they you know open to learning especially with the way the modern apprenticeship is like they do a lot of on-site training but there's also a lot of book work in the background which they need to have the um, get up and go to do them themselves guys who are enthusiastic you know, because eventually you don't expect them to know everything. So that's why they're there. So you can train them, but they just got to be willing to learn and show up with a good attitude. Yep. That attitude is always the critical piece, isn't it? We can uh, easily teach the skill, but the uh, attitude piece is key. Um, Jason, what were yes. you what were you looking for in um, joining uh, Catalyst? What what kind of environment were you looking for? What kind of team around you? What was what interested you in joining the Catalyst team? Um, well, looking for a new company, obviously, the people you're working with is really big. You know, you want a good team environment, which we definitely have at Catalyst. Get on with all the guys, you know, a nice bunch of guys. So that's a major for me. Also, the, the type of work. I started my apprenticeship doing a lot of group housing. So I learned all the basic really quickly and I got them hammered into me. But I was sort of looking to move up to more upscale work. Um, yes. Like Carl's working on. Yeah, that was, that was also a big, big one for me, trying to um, develop my skills into more upscale work. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, more more complex work. You'll like it. And from a, um, your, you know, Carl talked about the requirement for you to do a lot of work, uh, book work and, you know, your coursework in, uh, alongside the on-site work that you're doing. Um, tell us what that's meant from your perspective, how much has been involved and how have you dealt with the motivation to not only do a full day's work, but then also hit the books after afterwards um i think the motivation for me was always the end goal of becoming qualified you know becoming a tradesman so that was always something i was working towards and i found that um coming to catalyst carl was always there to offer his help and um also the tradesmen we worked with you know they training you not only on site but they can give you um like knowledge skill as well so they can teach you um all the skills you really need to learn and then you just need to be willing to go home and put the effort in on the books at night yeah well done mate it's uh it's a fantastic that you can do that and did the uh, catalyst team did they have any like little initiations for the apprentice did they nail your tool bag to the floor or you know hide your lunch or anything was there any of that carry on uh, i'll have to be honest i was definitely watching my back but you know the boys looked after me they were good oh well, sounds like you got off pretty light there uh jason yeah, or maybe that maybe they're a bit wary of what you do in return so that was a, that was a good result <laughs> yeah that's it that's it you never know the boy, the boy from down the line you know, don't know exactly yeah yeah those boys from fokotani got to keep an eye on them yeah um, um, nice one. And look, you decided to enter Apprentice of the Year. Whose idea was that? Was that something you'd become aware of, Jason? You were keen to enter or was it was it Carl? Did that come from you? So I actually entered two years in a row. I entered 2018 as well. And um, I was interested because I'd seen ads for it on Facebook. So I was thinking about it. And then the one day Carl came to site and he you know, he said, what do you think about it? He spoke to one of the tradesmen I was working with at, at the time and um, we sort of um, made the decision that I would I would enter. It was something I was really keen on and I think Carl just uh, bringing it up to me sort of made my decision for me. Okay. Yeah, and then obviously um, having done the competition in 2018, I really enjoyed it. So I thought, you know, it's going to be my last year I can enter. I'm definitely going to go for it in 2019. Cool. And what's the uh, application process for uh, getting involved with uh, Apprentice of the Year? Was that, was that easy? How did that work? Yeah, I found it very easy. Um, it was just an online process. So um, 
you know, there's a few stages to the application. Um, obviously, all your basic details and all that. Um, a letter of recommendation from your training advisor and your employer. A written submission. And um, yeah, just a little bit about yourself and why you think you have what it takes to be the best. Yeah, yeah I, I found it a very easy, um, very easy application process. Right. So uh, certainly, probably some apprentices sitting at home at the moment, whilst we're in uh, COVID nineteen lockdown, that could use a bit of time to do their online process if they were keen to get involved. Yeah, hundred percent. And yeah. I mean, it doesn't take long, and it's it's just so worth it. Yeah. Okay. So kind of three parties involved, obviously yourself, um, Carl, and then your, your training advisor. So that was your BCITO person. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's Mike Sosa from BCITO. Yeah. Okay. Great. And tell us just about kind of the journey of the competition. So you did your application process. Uh, what happens next? Do you get a notification to say you've been selected to go to a, a next stage and what does that next stage look like? Yes. Yeah, so I believe if I remember correctly, um, once you've done all your application process, there's a uh, practical element, which uh, is a two-hour practical where you go to a Cardiff branch near you and um, you're given a set of plans and some timber and you're told, make this as best you can. So, um, right. yeah, I found that really good experience too. That was um, really good fun. Okay. And well within your capability, given what you would already learned on site and through your training? Yeah, definitely. Um, plan reading is a big skill, um, very important to carpenters. So if you can read a plan, um, that sort of... Yeah, what, what they're testing you on. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good place to start out. It's not, not too good if you can't read the plan, end up building, <laughs> building the bedroom in the long, wrong location. <laughs> yeah. Not going to be too uh, too heavy. Okay, and so you went through that practical and like how many other, were, were you doing that with a group of apprentices at the time or was it just you at the branch? How did that work? Yeah, um, in the 2019 competition, I think there were 24 apprentices at that stage. So that was held over two different Cardiff branches. Yeah, just over 10 people per branch. And um, you early on, you get to meet a few other guys that are sort of at the same stage as you. And yeah, and you just put your skills to the test and yeah. Okay. And that's done at a regional level. So you did it in Auckland with the Auckland apprentices and then this is happening all around the country. Is that what, is that what happens? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So okay. um, yeah, I think there's uh, 10 different regions and um, yeah, everyone from that region who's entered uh, yeah, compete. Okay. So after that initial at the Carters branch, we did the plan reading, did some uh, practical. What, what was the next stage in the competition? From there, they cut it down to top 10, I think. And you go through another um, another stage, which is a site visit, a formal interview. And yeah, um, yeah from there, they, they, um, they, you know, assign points for each uh, each part and then choose the uh, first, second and third. All right. So, the, so the, the team, the Catalyst team said nice things about you when, when the site visit happened? Yeah, I had to agree a few palms, but, yeah, right. but they were, were all you, nice. <laughs> were, you, were you on the coffee run for the rest of the month after that one? Oh, rest of the year. <laughs> rest of the year. Jeez, tough crew. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Nice oh, one. Good bunch of guys, but awesome. a tough bargain. Yeah, yeah. As, oh, that's all about leverage, right? You've got to, got to uh, utilize yeah. the leverage. And Carl, how yeah, about right. for you? Did you have any um, involvement in the Apprentice of the Year process? Um, yeah, like I, I'm pretty heavily involved with um, Master Builders and sort of what we do. So I was fully aware of the competition prior to Jason being in it. I was judging it. But right. once he entered, I wasn't allowed, so sure. with conflict of interest, so I, was, I was stepped aside. But yeah, with the application, you know, I thought Jason would do well. So I think neither of us had touched base on it. But then when I approached him and said, oh, would you be interested? He obviously, had, like you said, he'd been thinking about it. So it's pretty, as an employer, you know, you've got to the letter to do and then you've obviously got to make yourself available for the site visit and I helped Jason where I needed to through the process but it's pretty much apprentice driven once they've decided to apply for it um, and their applications and like Jason said he did the practical and then it was cut down to the top 10 then he did his interview and the site visit is once again is sort of when you get a bit of face to face with the judges and they go through the site and just sort of ask you know what's Jason been involved on here can you show us the work he's been doing so as an employer it's you know good to be there and help them but there's not um, a lot other than you know, the initial letter and then the site visit really. So it's just sort of been in the background to help him if mm -hmm. need be. So it's not too onerous on your time as an owner 
um, getting involved in uh, helping no, that process? Um, and, and you know, I've sort of wanted to help him. So if it's pretty much apprentice driven. So yeah, the owner doesn't have to invest too much time. And That's Jason, from your problem. from your perspective, not too um, time intensive either. Obviously, you had your um, session at, at the Carters branch, but um, in terms of other apprentices who might be thinking getting involved, you'd be saying to them, "Hey, look, go for it. It's not too onerous." Yeah, I think um, you definitely get out what you put into it. So right. uh, there there is a written submission that you know, I spend quite a bit of time on personally, but you know, it's not time consuming. Like if you're used to doing your books when you get home, you know, it takes no more time than, than that. Only a couple of hours on a written submission that for what you get out of it, that's nothing. Awesome. Great job. And what about the process did you most enjoy? About the whole process, definitely um, meeting all the guys, especially in the national finals, you know, it's um, sort of made friends for life there. You're always, um, you know, comparing, um, methods of how we do things and talking about not only industry la- industry related things but also just personal things we're all mates now so Great. yeah i found that awesome yeah cool and where did the national final take place uh that was held in auckland so home turf for me yeah it was held at uh, the asc showground right and what did you have um, to do yeah, in that, the elements there uh, so that consisted of another small written submission uh, a, a lot smaller this time so that only took me about half an hour that one and um then you, you start off with the formal interview view with a, a panel of four judges and yeah then the next day we did I think it was a 16 hour practical so it was over, over two days we did a, right. a practical event wow yeah and what did that involve what were you doing in the practical um so this one was on a, a much larger scale than the regional practical uh we we're given plans for a pirate ship which was um to be donated to local schools cool yeah yeah so um yeah, definitely a lot of plan reading on that. Um, there are a few bits and pieces, you know, a few details that were missing that you had to sort of um, figure out. So definitely a big challenge on the plan reading. I, I definitely recommend to anyone who does it to take the time and read the plans because once you once you understand it, you'll be sweet, but you just got to get to that stage where um, you know what's going on. Yeah, the good old measure twice, uh, cut once kind of scenario. Oh, I, I tell you what, I was measuring five times before I cut. Yeah, it's, smart, uh, smart move. Just the pressure, eh? Yeah, because... Yeah. Um, the, the amount of uh, materials they give you is only just enough to complete the job. So there's no, um, you know, no opportunity for um, stuff up. Yep. No, no waste. And uh, yeah, not, exactly. yeah, yeah. Not too much uh, liquid nails around to try and piece it back together. If you've done it wrong. <laughs> yeah. No bogging. <laughs> no bogging. Damn. Well, that's pretty cool. And so were you working on this pirate ship uh, individually or is there a bunch of uh, apprentices all working on the same one? Yeah. So it was, um, Everyone had their own project to work on, um, their own pirate ship. It was about the size of a large couch, I guess you'd say. Yep. Um, and yeah, it was uh, like just like a little playground sort of pirate ship for um, for young kids who uh, it was actually low decile schools. It was donated to, which fantastic. Was, um, so it was really rewarding. They all came down on the day, and they uh, they each had a builder chair for. So oh, yeah, that's it was, cool. It was, a, it was a great event. Yeah. So you didn't need to water test it afterwards. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure how well it float, to be honest. <laughs> Like a rock, I assume. Oh, look, congratulations, Jason. I think um, on your journey so far in the building industry, it sounds like you've achieved a lot already, not just in what you've achieved in Apprentice of the Year, but also your contribution to the team at Catalyst. And you know, it comes through very clearly your willingness to, uh, you know, take the bull by the horns and really put the effort in and, and make things happen. I think it's uh, fantastic for the industry and you're a real role model. Congratulations. Well done. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. And, and Carl, for you, um, what What's the what's the future of, of Catalyst? Where are you guys headed? Will you be uh, taking on more apprentices in the future? Are you looking to send Jason down to Massey and maybe get him cloned like Dolly the Sheep or something? What's what's the plan? <laughs> yeah, that'd be ideal if we could. But um, yeah, I guess if you had asked me this question last year, it would have been an easy yes. answer. But I yes. guess with everything happening in this current environment is... Yeah, I think I'll be looking at um, more apprentices. We've got, obviously, Jason's just come out of his time and then another one of ours, Ryan, who's just come out of his time as well. So then I've got another two or one and then potentially signing up another one. But I think, I guess we just got to see after this lockdown what the landscape's looking like and sure. then build it up. But yeah, I think company's sitting in a good spot. We've put in a lot of hard work to get to where we are. So and we've got a good team of guys on board that, you know, we can move forward as a team and sort of, you know, go through it all together. So, but I, like I said earlier, I'm a firm believer in training up guys and giving back to the industry and especially the likes of Jason 
coming out of his time just recently and his experiences and I guess say with Ryan just coming out apprentices coming in you know they've got guys who've just been through it so they've got a, a good sounding board to get well trained in the book work side of it if they need to as well yep I oh, look how testament to you the willingness to invest in your team members and uh, I think you use the word you that you were lucky to have a good team around you I doubt there's been much luck involved I'm sure it's been uh, a lot of hard work and investment on your side that's uh, created that that team so uh, well done to you and your willingness to give back and, and help develop the next generation of carpenters coming through is fantastic and if we can get even more of our master builders members to bring that kind of attitude and that kind of investment into the industry uh, we'll continue to have a, a good bunch of tradesmen coming through and delivering great homes and great projects for the for the rest of New Zealand so thanks for your efforts you know as a company we're very proud of Jason and what he's done and um, you know especially as an industry moving forward you know we need guys like them coming through to sort of you know keep pushing us on because you know we've got a good background of tradesmen here that there's a lot of knowledge to be passed on and if we can share that knowledge, then it's only beneficial to our industry and the homes we build. So, mm. oh, and and look, I think uh, not only do we need more Jasons, but we need more Carls as well. The people that are willing to invest in their teams and uh, take on apprentices and help them grow and share that knowledge is really important for the uh, for the industry to thrive as well. So, if we maybe take you both to uh, Massey and clone you both, I think that'd be pretty handy as well. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for uh, joining us on the uh, Master Builders podcast today and thanks for uh, being so open and willing to share your experiences, um, not only in the competition, but also uh, building as well. Really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Okay, Brian. Cheers, Brian. Cheers. Have a good one. Take care. Enjoy lockdown. Cheers, mate. Take care. Me too.